uh, lead Fox uh, college football analyst joining me here on the program, Joel Klatt. How are you, Joel? I'm doing good. I'm doing very good. It was an exciting night last night. You did a great job, man. You really were. Thank you. Thank you. You are welcome. You did a great job. And um, what's your honest assessment of what you saw by the Wolverines last night, Joel? Yeah, you know, I, th- that's what's so interesting is, is, and I said it during the broadcast, I know it probably sounded strange, but I thought that Michigan had more things available to them. I thought Utah had to fight more and scratch and dig deeper into their playbook schematically in order to, to win that game. And, and their quarterback was the difference, Travis Wilson. But when you look at, at least what, when I looked at Michigan's defense, what they did to stop Devontae Booker, and then what they had available in the passing game and miss, and then the three picks, one goes back for a pick six, Michigan just let that one slip. I mean, they, they were right there, ready to win that game on the road against a team in which I gave a top 25 vote to. So um, I think that they did a really nice job. They're talented on defense. And uh, I, if I was a Michigan fan, I would be more encouraged than disappointed even though the same thing rings true as last year, quarterback turnovers end up killing you. Well, and that's the problem is how can that be fixed if there is a quarterback who is prone to uh, turning the football over, which Rudock has not been prior to last night's start for Michigan. How can that get fixed, Joel? Well, you know, the, the first interception, I feel bad for him because everyone's just going to say, hey, three picks. The first one is wide receiver stop. Uh, on a route that he should have continued, and he just got caught. Uh, the second one, I saw that he just overthrew it, and then he started to panic a little bit and press and stared down the, uh, the out route for the pick six. So how do you fix that? Well, obviously film study is going to help. So you go back to the drawing board. Because remember, even though he's an experienced guy, Rich, and he's played a lot of football, he hasn't played a lot of football in that system for Jim Harbaugh. So he's going to make his – his biggest strides from week one to week two. Um, That being said, I I wouldn't be surprised at all if we see Shane Morris at some point in their second ball game against uh, Oregon State next week. Um, I think Jim's going to have to find a guy that will go out there and play clean. And sometimes you just have to try it out, throw it against the wall, and see what sticks until you find that guy. Yeah, but if that happens, Joel, and he also is turnover prone, then what? I mean, now you're two games into the season and you've shown your hand that you don't believe in one kid more than the other. Then you better be a good recruiter <laughs> is, what, is what the deal is. Uh, and that's what I think that's what's frustrating about this season, right, for Michigan, is that the roster, you look at all the seniors in the 2D, uh, the, the quality defense that they played. I don't think people um, really understand how good Utah is running the football oh, and how pr- good yeah. Devontae Booker really is. So they just thought, oh, well, yeah, they played pretty good on defense. No, they played exceptional on defense. They really did, and they were up against it. And Travis Wilson had to play one of his better games that I've ever seen uh, as, as a four-year starter for Utah to bring him back and, and win that game. So uh, if they get quality quarterback play at all, they're going to be just fine. Well, I will we... say this. Development will take place, though, Rich. Okay. Jim and Jed Fish are great coaches, and, and they will coach – the quarterback the right way and i'm expecting big growth during the course of the you know second third fourth game you're gonna see growth from the quarterback i I guarantee it well at least joel that their their top most hated rival aren't defending champions with uh, top-notch quarterbacks growing on trees over there so you know (laughs) at least at least michigan doesn't have that it's not like the school that you load more than any other and three quarterbacks that would start anywhere in the (laughs) sec maybe save for mississippi state don't don't Pay attention to that. So what happens Monday, do you think? I'm on with Joel Cloud of Fox Sports. What, what do you think happens on that Labor Day marquee game, uh, Ohio State and, and Virginia Tech? Well, I, I'm, a, I'm a bit more nervous for Ohio State than most. You know, everyone's just penciling in all these wins for them, and they're the greatest team in the history of college football. Mm-hmm. And the first unanimous number one, so uh, so forth. And listen, they're without Joey Bosa and Jalen Marshall. Those are going to hurt them from the suspensions. Noah Brown, I talked with a lot of people, Rich, out of Columbus, and he said, they all said, Noah Brown was the best wide receiver in camp. They're losing him. So all of a sudden, Braxton Miller, he doesn't become a novelty at wide receiver. He becomes a need now at wide receiver, Mm -hmm. Uh, a guy that's never played that position, even though he's explosive. Um, The migraine situation with Cardell Jones, it, it, it 
that is not a good thing because trust me, I had head injuries in the past. I'm not saying this is a head injury, but you right. don't want to mess with neurological type of issues. Um, and Virginia Tech is a team that's talented enough, very similar to, to Utah, that will play very good defense. Uh, and I think they're going to give Ohio State some problems. Who's the second best team in college football? Do you think? You know, Joe? I would I would have said it was TCU pretty clearly. Um, I, I can't wait to watch that game. I haven't watched that game back from Minnesota. I think Minnesota is an underrated team. Jerry Kill reminds me a lot of. He's cut from the same cloth as these guys like Frank Beamer and and Bill Snyder at Kansas State. That regardless of the team that they're out, the place that they're at, that they're always going to have a competitive, hard nosed team. Um, I would have said TCU, but but I will tell you this. Uh, the more that the preseason went on uh, and the more I got to really hear and feel what was going on around the country and visit some fall camps, Michigan State is a team that I think could end up being as good of a team oh, as anybody in the Joel, country. Joel, I'm, I'm miserable enough today, Joel. Come I on, know, man. And I, I hesitated Joel. going there with you because I know, I mean, you woke up somber and, you you know, you got to relive oh, this Joel. game. You probably, uh, I really? know. Do I got to get true. myself ready for that too? Really? Oh, man, Michigan State's good, Rich. Mm. They are good. I would take Connor Cook number one in the draft if I was a GM. No kidding. Their, their defense is sensational. They're going to be as, as good as anybody. That game against Ohio State is going to be an absolute uh, just fist fight in a, th- in a phone booth. Yeah, they've got to they've got to they've got to play them before they play Michigan. That's back to back for them. Yeah, exactly. Well, they've so, got they've got one. Cu- I shouldn't use the word cupcake because you know we saw what Utah got all upset about that. They've got a lot of cupcakes <laughs> after another after this Monday test. It's just you know uh, there, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of cupcakes on that Ohio State yeah. schedule. Let's not be let's not uh, let's not tell any tales out of school here, Joel. That's you know true. I mean? Th- that's true. I'm not disagreeing with you. The only ranked opponent on their schedule is Michigan State. The only other teams even receiving votes um, mm. are Vatek and Penn State. Uh, joining me here, Joel Klatt, Fox Sports. Read them the poll question, Chris Brockman, here at richeisenshow.com today, please. What's up, Joel? What's going on? How are you? Best college football tradition. Dotting of the I, 12th man, Howard's Rock, or the fourth quarter jump around Game at Wisconsin? Day. Game day tradition. Uh, all, all, all good. All good. But running out behind a live buffalo mm-hmm. clearly is the best tradition in all of sports, even if your alma mater just lost to Hawaii last night That's in right. the middle of the night. What in – I mean, Rich, you think you're depressed. Did you watch that what game, in, Joel? Because there was some talk the end there. got hosed. I was not, up until – what was it? It was like 3 a.m. here. I got back to L.A. late and you know, what happened turned at the, on that game. What happened at the end here, of the game there, Joel? So here's what happened. They're down by eight and they're driving. So, so first of all, they were down by, I guess, 15. And they go down and they score. Uh, and, and kick the ball off and, and stop Hawaii. You know, Hawaii did them a bunch of favors, threw the ball, incomplete pass, stopped the clock. So they get the ball just outside of a minute, and they're driving down no timeout left. They've got to get a score and a two-point conversion. And with about 13, oh, 17 seconds left on the clock, they're at about the 15-yard line, and they throw a swing route that the quarterback, Sefo Lufau, kind of threw too far to the inside. So the running back kind of has to dive inside to catch it, and he goes down before the first down marker. Mm. So clock's running, no timeouts. So they jump up, and he kind of tosses the ball to the official. The official then, rather than just running and spotting it himself, because now they're trying to work out the mechanics of this eighth official, remember that college football has gone to? So the umpire who's got the ball, tosses it to the center judge who's supposed to spot it. He bobbles the toss. Oh. It hits the ground. Then it, a Utah player kind of like kicks it, and it kind of, you know, and so now it's like five, four, and Colorado is standing there saying, spot the ball, we want to spike it. And they didn't get the ball spotted in wow. time. Clock runs out. So Butterfingers on the center judge, essentially. The, the eighth the official ball. got him. Got the, him. The eighth official got him. Now, Joel, has there ever been running behind a live Tatanka in Boulder? Running behind that bull? Uh, that, Have that, I that ever? Bison. Has, that, has there ever been, has there ever been uh, a mishap running behind that uh, Oh, there's that been beast? plenty of mishaps. I, uh, so, two, when I was there specifically, Rich, one time we come out, we we're playing Nebraska, big rivalry game. That was, this is back when we actually won some football games, you yeah, know? Yeah. And the Buffalo takes about three steps and just stops. And so we all just <laughs> run into the back. Like a butt fumble? Like the butt the fumble? The like the, the butt fumble? Like the butt fumble? Like the butt fumble? 
He's done. He's not running anywhere. Sort of like the butt fumble, Sanchez and the butt fumble, Joe? Is that what you're Almost saying? Almost exactly. Almost exactly. And so we're all, you know, and none of us want to actually pass the Buffalo and no. get in front of the Buffalo because just then you're stop. just going to get run over. So the whole team just stops the run out. The uh, band's playing and everyone's just standing there because the Buffalo is like, I am not moving another inch. Last question so. for you, Joel. Be honest with me. Gus Johnson or you, who had more fun saying the name Jake Butt? last night more than the other Joel. oh I, I i think i did for for sure i'm way more immature than than gus you know <laughs> but the, the one that we we would both look at each other was the tight end from utah uh-huh. um uh, faka ilo atanga uh-huh. oh my gosh and of course he had like eight catches and he was you know the blocking all the time we mm-hmm. kept having to say his name every time we had to say his name gus looked at me he was like i hope this is right <laughs> but you have to say jake though because if you just say but you know it, you, you feel like you're 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 contradicting yourself and you're continuing the sentence you got to say well, jake but you can't just I say got, but i got caught because jake but had that amazing catch in the end zone yes and a lot of times you just use the last name. You know, amazing catch by Wilson or whatever. Yeah. And so I got caught. I said, I was like, what a catch from butt. <laughs> <laughs> There's the butt fumble. There's a butt hurt. There's a butt. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff. Hey, Joel, you, oh, like man. I said, you were awesome last night, man. It was a great listen with it. you and Gus. And have a great season. Please stay in touch. I'd love to have you on as much as you'd like. Yes, absolutely. Thank Anytime. You. You uh, bet. A, a lot of fun. Thank you, Rich. You bet. And, and, hey, listen, everything mm-hmm. will be all right, man. I'm telling you, the Wolverines are headed in the right direction. Thanks for the verbal hug. I appreciate you it. You got it. That's at Joel Klatt. <laughs> the Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.